Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Let's see here. Uh, Tony with uh, next with Tully Blanchard, J.J. Dillon, and Lex Luger. Dillon says he's heard about the all-time record at Pittsburgh for the Stampede, but that's great. The horsemen sell out everywhere. Tully says being a horseman is a 24-hour day job. Lex Luger says they're hiring extra security. Estrogen levels are surging, and there's a there's girls shoving dollar bills in his trunks. You know, I was watching this, and I thought, <laughs> uh, okay, we did this last week. Let's do it again. J.J. Dillon. Mm. Definitely looks older than me. Sure. How old is he? 44 on the show. Wow. Good 44. Lord. <laughs> he looks okay. like my dad. Then, then I'm like, okay, here's a guy who maybe, maybe looks my age. He actually might look a few years older, but it's close. Tully. Right? Sure. 32. What? Tully Blanchard was 32 years old on this show. 20 years older than him. 32. 32. 52. And then my favorite is the next match is Alan Martin and Randy Mulkey versus Ole and Arn Anderson. And we have joked that Arn Anderson is one of those guys who's always looked old. Perpetually, yes. Confirmed. He was 28 on this show. 28 years old. Good Lord. He was almost half my current age. 20 fucking 8 is how old he was. The road alone, you brother. Apparently. The road alone, yeah. Anyway, they beat these guys. Lex Luger is an amazing heel. He's cutting this promo, and he's basically, in a nutshell, I'm going to beat your baby faces, and I'm going to take all your women. And there's nothing you can do about it. Perfect heel. We're on the match here, brother. I know. Okay. So Only after... one with, you'll never guess, an arm bar. Right. Well, yeah. there was a top rope knee after before that. Put him and Brad Armstrong together. All right, next up, uh, J.J. Dillon is recapping the history of the Horsemen. He says it started with uh, Ole and Gene Anderson. Then they lost Gene. Ole turned to Cousin Rick and Cousin Arn for a threesome. Then they brought in an outsider, Tully Blanchard. Tully then objected to J.J.'s choice of words, and he pointed out that he can't be the outsider if he has a damn title belt, and Ole doesn't. So Ole comes over, and he confronts Tully about this uh, pot shot, and Tully says Ole only has himself to blame for caring too much about that snot-nosed kid of yours. And Ole gives Tully a punch to the face. Hmm. And J.J. steps between them, and Tony throws it to commercial before they start just brawling. This was a gigantic angle. Ole punches this guy out, and there's a near riot. Everybody's going crazy. This shit never happened on this television show. And it's just a big schmoz, whatever they call it, schmoz. And uh, and that's the end of Ole and the Four Horsemen. This was this was the split. Ole fucking Anderson going babyface. Ole Anderson going babyface is what this is the beginning of here. To the point where the next match is Misty Blue and Linda Dallas. I'll talk about this in a moment. But we don't even see the finish of this match mm -mm. because the announcers are talking about what just happened. And out comes JJ, and he says, Brother, hold on a second. We don't need to be talking about this. There's a match going on right now. You guys are being paid to talk about the wrestling. Stop talking about this. Everything's fine. And the announcers are like, No way, brother. Uh, Ole just punched out, uh, you know, Tully. This is a big story. We got to talk about it. And so, as they're talking, the match ends. There's this ringing of the bell. We don't don't know, know who won. I have no idea. I mean, I presume it was uh, Misty, Blue, Misty Blue, but we don't know. They never alerted us later. It was just like an afterthought. And the match <laughs> itself. And Tony shows a replay of what happened earlier during the match. Yeah. Well, we never get a replay of the actual finish of the match. We get a replay of the, which obviously, you know, Ole punching out. It was much, much bigger than the match. But this match... Okay. Now, first off, the match was terrible. But second off, the show was 1986. Seven. 1987. Mm -hmm. You could not have aired that match on Netflix, I don't think. Fair. In 2024. Misty Blue is wearing this outfit that, like, I would never fly today. 
It just would never fly. And then... It's practically a thong. Linda Dallas is it, wearing... It was cold in the studio. No, that, no, no, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay, my, <laughs> no, kids, my kids go to swimming, okay? I've seen swimsuits. I've seen women in swimsuits. Sure. Not like this, okay? No. I don't know what this outfit was made of, mm. okay? Perhaps air, but... I mean, you can see all Linda Dallas. Yep. I mean, Every I'm not trying to be curve. crass. I'm not trying to be crass here, okay? Yeah. Sometimes you'll see nipples, okay? And we did. Areola. You see everything. You yep. see everything. Sure. She. There's literally a spot where I believe that Dallas, I think Dallas is the one that used the octopus. One of them used the octopus hold. Right. And they have to blur out a vagina. Yes. There's blurring on the screen. Mm-hmm. How did this air? How? This like this should have been like on Scramble Vision. Remember when we were kids and like the the I have channel no idea what you're would be about, Brian. scrambled and <laughs> yeah, you don't know because you uh, bought that illegal gimmick so that you could watch those channels. How dare you? You I creep. Was given, the rest given, of us set that little knob between zero and one. The rest of us had that. There's just like it's all green or whatever, and like every now and then you'd you know. Yeah. Honestly, watching Scramble Vision, you know, I don't know, man. This was like I couldn't even believe it. I could not believe this fucking aired on television. Yeah. And it was horrible. It was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, going back to the fight, and not the fight to keep the your, your lady parts in place, I mean the Tully and, and, and Oli fight. What an awesome fight. It looked like a fight. Not today where the two wrestlers fight. grab onto each other and they fall into cardboard boxes and uh, randomly uh, stacked pipes. No, this was a fight. They were rolling around on the floor. They were throwing punches. It was out of control. Horrible sweeps. Oh, Horrible side it. control. Loved it. Next up, um, Nikita Koloff versus Vernon Deaton. Who cares? I mean, Koloff won with the Russian sickle. Yes. Sure. They immediately went back to JJ where he demanded an apology from Oli to reach uh, to each horseman individually. Plus an apology for JJ himself for what took place. Oli comes out and gives JJ a right hand. Tully comes out and defends his manager's honor, and uh, that's when they just start brawling. And that's it. Yeah, this was an awesome angle. It's made the show worthwhile, this angle here at the end. Nowadays, if you watch a lot of wrestling, you see shit like this like three times per show. But back then, this was just a little studio show. Mm-hmm. They'd show, you know, every now and then, like, Ric Flair would come in and wrestle somebody or whatever. But, I mean, in general, it was just, we watched the same fucking arm bars from Brad Armstrong every week. Bunch of just horrific jobbers. Every now and then, you'd see a tape, maybe, of something, and it'd be like, holy shit, we saw five seconds of Dusty Rhodes and Big Bub in a cage. But to actually shoot an angle, and not just shoot an angle, but breaking up the four horsemen. Mm-hmm. Only out of the four horsemen after this angle right here to set up so much more, which actually didn't set up that much more. I mean, he was around for a while and then left and then. But they're competing with WrestleMania. And... Like, what's going on over there? We got to do something big. That is that is true. It's got to be all well, the horsemen. It's the yeah, biggest it's thing we got. It's funny because, like, as an angle, as an angle, like, as what actually happened that we saw on television, like, this was miles better than what they did with Hogan and Andre. Sure. But. You know, whatever you want to say about what they actually did with Hogan and Andre, that had way more impact. And that led to a way, way, way bigger match. So, One thing I noticed on actually both the shows we're watching right now, um, it's a bunch of matches that really don't mean anything. And then when it comes to the angle, it's so impactful because the rest of the show is such a nothing. It's, it's like, like shooting the, an angle on a rampage. Right. Or, you know, like, okay, like in the 90s when Raw was at its peak, there was so much going on. The crash TV, you couldn't keep up with all the different angles. This was so simple. There was one angle and then there was some wrestling. And the the angle actually meant a lot more than they do today or back then or uh, or in the 90s. Well, that was a show, everybody, and uh, at least we ended with a good angle there. Absolutely. At least we ended with a good angle. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.